back to standard definition, welcome back to Neon Airship. It's time for part 2 of the Tapeless Mini DV project, and if you found part 1 a little intimidating with all the soldering and the 3D printing, well, you're in for a treat today. Ooh. I've had more people reaching out to me privately about the Tapeless Mini DV project than anything else I've ever made, and I'm super pleased about that because that means a lot of you are just as enthusiastic about these old cameras as I am. Ever since making that video, there's been a few things that bug me. First is the codec used by the Eoshin DVR, Motion JPEG. It's a very lossy codec, and when we're working with standard definition footage, we want to keep as much data as possible. It also only records at 30 frames per second. This means there's going to be drop frames compared to the camera's native 50 or 60i, and it's going to be pretty rubbish in slow motion which is obviously no good if you're filming skating or other action sports type stuff. Lastly, it's a bit of an intimidating project for people who've never soldered before or have no access to a 3D printer. So ideally I wanted to find something a little bit more accessible. The first thing I tried was an EasyCap capture card plugged into an Android phone. Essentially the same idea as my last video where I showed you how to use your phone as a HDMI monitor. I'm certain there's a way to get this working, but I had no such luck. I tried two different EasyCap cards, including one that specified that it had the right chip, but my phone just wouldn't recognise it, so I gave up. This method would require no soldering, but it would still be limited to 30 frames per second, so it might be a good solution for some, but it's not ideal for me. Eventually I came across a product called the Immersion RC Powerplay. It's another DVR for FPV drone goggles, and this thing seems like it'd be almost perfect. The PowerPlay records to microSD in a H.264 codec at up to 60 frames per second. It's got a nice bright built-in display, which is perfect for VX users who don't have a flip-out screen, and has a compact battery solution that you can recharge via USB Type-C. This battery solution is designed to provide power to FPV goggles, so if you're using the unit standalone, it will give you really long battery life, like all day long. On the subject of batteries, the PowerPlay used to come supplied with 18500 batteries in the box. A lot of the reviews mentioned how rubbish they were, so Immersion RC opted to supply the current version without any batteries. This is fine, and you can pick up a set on Amazon or eBay for next to nothing, but since I have a lot of 18650 batteries, and can't resist a bit of a tinker, I decided to 3D print a rear casing that will accept these. It's not too difficult, and Mute FPV made a great tutorial which I'll link in the description. This mod does add a bit of girth to the device, but it improves the battery life even further and it saved me having to buy any batteries. To mount the power plate to your camera, there's loads of options. I first tried using my phone clamp and a hot shoe ball head mount. It works great and you can simply stick the power plate into most phone mounts sideways, then use the ball head to point it in the right direction. For me I just found this to be a little too bulky. So I took the goggle strap mount and the velcro strap that comes in the box with the power play and after a bit of fiddling and with the help of a cable tie to connect the little velcro loop I've managed to bodge together a pretty sturdy, lightweight and low profile mount. Connecting the power play to your camera is a breeze. For my GL2 the supplied cables work a treat. They've got some extra bits for powering the goggles which I might chop off at some point but the fact that it comes with a short coiled cable and a much longer one gives you loads of options when it comes to mounting the DVR. If you've got a VX1000, you'll just need to pick up a 3.5mm to RCA cable, the same as what we used in part 1. I don't know if it's just my particular unit, but I found that I only get a video signal when the 3.5mm jack is not pushed all the way in. It doesn't really cause any issues, but it's just something to watch out for. The biggest benefit of the power play is the 60 frames per second recording. This is something that's really hard to come across in an analog DVR. To demonstrate the difference, I've slowed down this clip of Surian to 20% speed. On the Eoshin DVR, it looks horrible, and you can quite clearly see the missing frames. But on the power play, there's a drastic improvement. As you can see, it's pretty damn close to the firewire in terms of motion. All of these clips are unaltered except for the scaling. You can see that the colours from the power play more accurately match the firewire too, with the Eoshin coming out very flat by comparison. Obviously firewire is going to give you the best quality, but if we blow these up to 300%, then you can see the gap isn't that big. It's definitely good enough for me at least. One thing to note when you're importing the power play footage, if you're using a HD timeline, 
and you'll need to interpret the footage to use D1 slash DV pixels, just like real DV footage, otherwise it will be slightly squished. Now onto the downsides. The big one for me is that the power play only records mono audio, but to be fair it does so really well. You already heard it a bit in the intro, but here's another test. This is a sound test of the GL2 plugged straight into the PowerPlay DVR. Here I am speaking on the left, and here I am speaking on the right. It's perfectly usable, but as you can hear, there's no stereo separation. Having stereo recording built in would really make this the perfect device for me. The other thing is the price. Compared to the £10 Eachine DVR, it's quite a big ask. Mine sent me back about 70 quid shipped from Banggood and they tend to go for about 80 or 90 pounds in the UK. Compared to faffing about with tapes and capture cards, the cost is well worth it to me, especially since the display on the power plate is brighter and has better viewing angles than the LCD on my GL2. Whether it's worth it for you or not, only you can be the judge. So that's about it for this one. As it stands, I think it's a pretty good solution for getting some more life out of these old cameras. I've reached out to Immersion RC about collaborating on a stereo version, which is optimized for this use case. If you'd be interested in buying a stereo version, there's a link to a Google form in the description where you can register your interest. I think a stereo version bundled with the right cables for VX users and maybe a hot shoe or quarter 20 threaded mount would be perfect. If we can get enough support for this, then hopefully it's something we can get off the ground. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe to stay in the loop. Until next time, doodles.